Yeah. My, my name is Leif. I'm going to be your cabin operator on the way up. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, or something cool in general you want to share, let me know. I'm right here. And say goodbye to Albuquerque because that asphalt curb directly below us is the city line. We have now entered the Cibola National Forest. We're leaving an altitude of about 6,559 feet above sea level. We're going to be climbing to an overall height of about 10,378 feet. So I'd recommend chewing on some gum and yawning a lot because we're going to be climbing like 4,000 feet during these next 15 minutes. It is once again wildlife season as well, so do keep an eye out on the higher points on the mountain. Be at things like coyotes, black bears, mountain lions, deer, mule deer. Uh, bobcats, ringtail cats. If you look around inside the cabin, you may find a scaredy cat. <laughs> There's also like two hundred species of birds too, like red tail hawks, golden eagles, blue jays, finches, snakes, spiders, lions, and snakes. tigers, and bears. <laughs> Directly below is the hiking trail. Back in the old days in 1964, that was once the service road that they used to build tower number one. It's about a 1.5 mile hike to the first tower. Should take you like 40-ish minutes if you plan on doing it. We are gonna get some swing as we go over the tower, guys, so be ready for that. Grab onto something if you must. It's gonna feel like a little roller coaster, so if we can all go. Be 
passing over tower number two momentarily. You probably noticed that there is no road or trail up to this point, and that's because tower two was built entirely through helicopter drop-offs. The whole tramway took over 5,000 helicopter chips to complete, with over 4,000 of those being directed towards tower two. We're going to be entering our big free span in a moment. Free span meaning distance in between tower two and the upper terminal. The span is around two miles. It's uh, the longest free-spanning aerial tram in the world. If you guys up in front can pull back on that bar as hard as you can so we can make it over the rocks. <laughs> pull up, pull up. <laughs> Expect some more swing, folks. We're going to be passing by the other cabin guys, so make sure to wave at the people on board, make a funny face, make a derogatory gesture. <laughs> That does mark our halfway point when we pass them just now, so we have about seven and a half minutes till we get to the top. Think about the tram like an old school clothesline. When you pull one side towards you, the other side goes farther away. That's how the whole cable operates, so when they slow down, so do we. When we dock, no, when we dock up on top, they'll be docking down below. We're also passing over our highest point on the way up. We're about 950 feet off the ground. We could almost fit the Eiffel Tower beneath us. Almost. Almost. The drop to the bottom from here would take about seven seconds. Jump in the last second. That did nothing, sir. This cliff up ahead of us to my left is a world-class rock climbing destination. We call it Ego Boost. <laughs> the climbers have to allow to pound any permanent pictures into the rock for their ropes, so they free solo it, meaning they climb without ropes whatsoever. Oh my gosh. If they get to the top, they get a nice Ego Boost. Yeah. Which they deserve, but they're still crazy. Yeah. Oh god, there's like eight of them up there. Yeah, if you guys look above us, there's like... Six or seven parasailers. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So they take the Mingo Baca Trail, which runs through that canyon, and then at a certain point they have to go off trail. Right. What's the distance of the hike? Um, see the parasailers? Oh, that looks like it. <laughs> Just on a guess, I would say. Maybe a little more. Yeah. Sure, a little bit softer. We're now passing over Echo Canyon. Directly below us, there's a year-round spring-fed water stream. So keep an eye out for that wildlife. I saw a black bear in this canyon last week. If you see a bear from here, they're gonna look like little black jelly beans that move around. <laughs> but you'll know. Hey, you dropped something. <laughs> Does anybody on board know why these mountains are called Sandia Mountains? Watermelon. Ten points for you, man. <laughs> they are right. sandy, but that's not it. Yeah, freeze up line, right? Uh, back when the Spanish first came here, they took note of how at a certain point during sunset, the mountains turn a bright pink color, reflecting the sunlight. So they looked at it, and they're all, oh, it looks like the inside of a watermelon. Sandia translates from Spanish to watermelon. The rocks that make this phenomenon happen are called feldspar, and you can see it all around us in the cliffs. It's going to be that more pink stuff. We have a saying here in Albuquerque, and it goes, when the mountains are pink, it's time to drink. <laughs> and they're always pink, so you know what that means. <laughs> We're passing over.
over our third and final canyon. This one's going to be called Domingo Baca Canyon. Domingo Baca translates from Spanish to Sunday Cow, but it is named after a real guy. Uh, he was a conquistador who explored the area back in 1597. We're going to have to look that up. But he must have done something right because now he's got a whole canyon named after him. And I've seen four black bears since winter ended. Three of them have been in this general area, so do keep an eye out for the uh, jelly beans. The jelly beans. That's a bit my tongue. slowing down because we're almost out of gas. Does anybody have a tent? <laughs> if you're tired of looking at the ground for wildlife, you can look out the windows to my left and follow the ridge crest up to the highest point you can possibly see up there. You're going to see what looks like a little box with a hole in it. Mm -hmm. That's called Kawani's Cabin. It was built in 1936 by the Civilian Conservation Corps. Back when it was built, it was a shelter for the workers. Once that was all said and done, it became a hiking shelter. And now nobody's allowed to sleep in there, but you can hike out there. It should take you about 35, 45 minutes. 1.4 miles, one way. There's some little people standing next to it, too. You're probably noticing a lot of these bright, green, skinny trees. Those are called aspen trees. Does anybody here know how many aspens are on the mountain in total? Ten points for you, ma'am. The, cor yep. uh, the correct answer is one, and that's because all aspen trees are connected by the same root system. So scientifically, they're all one collective tree. One organism. That's a lot of trees. At the upper terminal, we have vending machines, water fountains, and bathrooms. This building up ahead of us to my left is an awesome restaurant. They opened up at 11 o'clock this morning. Great food, great staff, great bar. Would recommend. If you plan on going to the bar, I would recommend watching your intake because one shot you take up here is going to turn to four once you get back down to the bottom. <laughs> so get your money's worth, but be smart is all I'm saying. Uh, we have hiking trails that go pretty much every direction, but my favorite is going to be the one out to Kiwani's cabin. To get to that trailhead, you um, go down the stairs next to the restaurant, then make a left on that patio dock, and then you'll find the trails if you go all the way across. Oh, look! He's about to go. Around. Each tram car goes down every 15 to 20 to 25 minutes. The last one goes down at 9 o'clock tonight, so listen up for those announcements. If you do miss that last one, don't worry. There are plenty of comfy trees up here to sleep under. <laughs> but for real though, listen up for those announcements. We have an intercom up here. <laughs> we'll keep you warm at night. <laughs> <laughs> we may get a few bumps as we dock, folks. So that's what these brown bars are for. They're called tusks. They're going to guide us in nice and smooth. Or as smooth as possible. We are going to get one final bump as we dot, guys, so be ready for that. I'll try my best to point out when it will occur. Pretty cool, huh? Here comes that final bump, guys, in three, two, one, one. 
Once this green light right above me turns off, Terrence will be letting you out through the doors opposite of me. Watch your step on the way out, guys. Please make a left at the building and please go all the way across the building through the gates.